In this video, we are going to study and understand a complete universal opening repertoire for black. And also that repertoire can be employed by white. So without further ado, the name is Hippopotamus System. Let's go to the board. Yeah, of course. So here for illustration and uh, overall these days in the opening series, I have been exaggerating and I have been telling you that I will make a video on the hippopotamus system hit hippopotamus system what a crazy and interesting name is it yeah so we will see about the hippopotamus system in this game through a game which was played between Hussein Mohammed Saif who is a 2000 rated player let uh, let's see his uh, rating on feederatings.com okay is 2085 in classical and uh, let me just uh, show you uh, his opponent Gapran Dash Willinona who is the women's world champion uh, let me show you uh, uh, biography Nona Gapran Dash is a fifth women world champion so you know both players are strong and her peak rating was 2495 so it's worth learning from Nona in this game so why do waste time let's head on to the board and let me show you the uh, let me just show you the hippopotamus system so here yeah, and 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 let me show uh, let me tell you that uh, the pokemon uh trainer card by my side it's a card which i've made in order to relate pokemons with chess and you know i like to do kind of stuff relating something to something so i i like it makes chess interesting for me you can try it if you want so without further ado let's start the video so here we have e4 so here you can you can the hippopotamus system let me show you the system over here this is the hippopotamus system all right we all know this you can bring the hippopotamus system from uh, with any it, it can transpose from any type of move order but the best order is this one with b6 we should be fianchar doing any other either of the bishop but uh, with b6 it makes your job very very easy so nona is doing it why don't you why don't we do it and now you fianchar do the other bishop f3 bishop g7 castles now white can also decide to play uh, to castle on the long side so accordingly you have to think uh, like from if he's castling long side you can also think try to plan uh, to castle opposite side like on, if he's castling on the long side you castle on the short side and you can attack so you have flexibility and let me tell you the hippopotamus system is like water it can take any shape and you can also convert the hippopotamus system into semi hippos which means that some alteration we can just uh, deviate from the main, line, main hippo setup to something other which you like like any setup you can, you can put the knights on f6 you can convert the hippo into anything okay so let's see this game and understand the real power of the hippo castle d6 c3 well this is a nice move by white okay we're gonna continue with our own setup e6 so even you, you can close your eyes and play out these moves and still uh, <laughs> you can play the game and let me tell you if you're a beginner this is a great opening because you won't lose in 10 moves you won't lose in 2 moves you won't lose at all because you would win this with with this and let me tell you you can win with any opening opening doesn't matter matter the real matter is the logic behind your moves so this is one setup which we which we can use which you can use also to uh, make plans beautiful plans so chess is all about making and formulating good plans okay of attack so it's a battlefield man battlefield of ideas as we all know so bishop g5 now we know we have to bring the knight on e7 and d7 so we have got a golden opportunity why not to seize it correct knight bd2 and bringing in the knight so this has been 
basic uh, hypothesis uh, structure. Now we have the ninth move, rook e1, h6, bishop h4, and here, um, uh, Nona, Nona Gaprin, Gaprin dash really, the women world champion, decides to castle. So develop a pieces, castle first. She has developed the pieces. If you don't know what I'm talking about, see the video of this chess improvement song, which I've made earlier. It's in all of my playlists and courses. And you can also see it in on my channel, of course. So she castles, so why don't we castle? So this is the 10th move and you've completed the hippo structure. Even in hippo, you, you can also play a u. Uh, hippo system structure also includes a6. Uh, and uh, the idea of this structure is that you one day you have to try to break this uh, good center, strong center, which, you, which we have uh, given white to make him overconfident. So, to attack, to undermine the center, we have to someday play f5 or c5. Okay? And also, I have told you about a locking system. If you play d5, you play e5. But, you will see what I am talking about. The opponent uh, now plays e5. Now, you may tell me, with, uh, as per the locking system, we should go ahead and play d5. But, Chess is a tricky game. You have to see what are the changes and weaknesses in the position. And I can see two of the weaknesses in this position. One of them is the bishop on b3. And the other one, oh, I'm sorry. And the other one is the pawn on b2. So, we can try to attack the weakness by opening up the d file. And that's the reason why if you block this, you will not uh, take the advantage of opponent's weaknesses. So chess is all, all about seeing the weaknesses which your opponent has and then accordingly to attack those weaknesses. And that's what we are going to learn from this game. In every game, let me tell you, we have to see what's our opponent's weakness. Okay? You have to try to attack it. There is there's no other rule and uh, this is the best rule which you can follow in chess see the weakness attack them if you don't see any weakness you can try to create them in your opponent and most importantly see what you, what's the weakness in your own camp and try to improve that weakness support it and eliminate that weakness okay so bishop d3 i can see so according to the locking system d5 would be very nice but this bishop is a weakness so why not uh, Punish white for that weakness. D takes e5. Very nice move by uh, Nono. And D takes e5. Now here, a very important move has to be played. So I would like to... Now how would you uh, take advantage of the weak bishop on d3? How would you attack it? Pause the video now and tell me. Alright, I think I've paused the video. And if you set the move... If you try to move the uh, knight on d7 somewhere to see if the bishop will easily move. And the problem basically is that this bishop on h4 is pinning this knight. Okay, so the queen is going to attack it, the bishop on d3. But the problem is that the queen has also has to support the weak knight on, where? on e7. So we have to also consider our own weaknesses and therefore to eliminate that pin and eliminate our own weaknesses in our own camp and then thus trying to attack our opponents we are going to play g5 not played this game i played this move and now she is threatening a very easy move move the knight and attack d3 so in the game hussein muhammad saif played bishop takes g5 in order to open up the king side and also to try to attack white and uh, attack black i'm sorry attack black and weaken the king side and getting two pawns for the bishop it's not bad yeah x takes g5 knight takes g5 but let me tell you what if the bishop would have gone to g3 then we would have uh, successfully made our plan 
of attacking the weakness and we will be a pawn up how take knight take c5 we are actually attacking the d3 bishop so there is no problem we are not sacrificing anything knight takes c5 bishop takes e5 bishop takes e5 and queen takes d3 so two rooks two mana pieces and six pawns for white but seven pawn for us and black has a uh, clear pawn up and with a with a really good development and there's also one variation where after knight takes e5 uh, we have knight takes e5 and instead of bishop takes e5 what if uh, okay bishop e instead of uh, white taking on e5 if, if white would have played knight f3 supporting the bishop on d3 then what we would have done we are still a pawn up we will just exchange the bishop and we are happy and the game would have continued in this fashion okay and black is just better yeah so now let's return to the game where so that's all pawn up but hussein tried to keep the game tactical and open up the white position with bishop takes g5 no one said no problem i'm confident about my hippo structure i know nothing is gonna happen to me um so i will just take your piece thank you for it and i think g5 so two pawns for the piece and now uh, Hussein is threatening Queen H4 with a checkmating threat. But we can also see another weakness. One weakness is the bishop on d3. Always ask yourself what is the weakness on the board. Then you will find tactics. You will win the games easily. So uh, the weaknesses are the bishop on d3 and the knight on g4. So if I move the knight on d7, uh, if I take knight into the spawn on e5 the problem is that the queen h4 is coming right and it's a bit difficult for me to stop that threat isn't that correct yeah so that threat is coming so i'm not going to attack the weakness on d3 just now but i see the weakness on uh, g5 and i have i want to block this queen's uh, eyes to that seven square so how can i do it so let me just close the arrows okay now we are going to play knight to f5 in order to block queen h4 uh, queen h5 with knight h6 or bishop h6 so mm, Hosan played queen h5 and uh, nana with a, with a great plan and also let me tell you with knight f5 discovering the weak knight on g5 that's what i, I was talking about so queen h5 is necessary, isn't it? You can move the knight back, then white black is it better, okay? So queen h5 and bishop h6. Attacking the knight and also defending the checkmate. So now, Hussein, again, he doesn't want to play passively. If he plays passively, if he brings his knight back somewhere, black is just better. He will win the game easily because he is a piece of first thing. He has a... Uh, Oh, you know good development he can bring his rooks even if this is a bad open ruined structure as they call it but I don't think so it's not that it's not that bad it's not losing the main thing is that the king is not dying the second thing is that we are a piece up and the third thing is that all pieces are coming to the game so we are not violating any rules so there's no worry Black, white is playing passively with knight gf3 so it's not working uh, if, and also the d3 bishop is uh, kind of hanging so Hussein Mohammed Saif makes a very great brave decision over here and that is of playing knight takes e6 giving um, blasting open the whites uh, blacks camp and giving taking two pawns for the knight again how we see the tactics when you'll get it double attack and grab the pawn okay this is what Hussein did and uh, okay we are not um, like uh, black has two piece up man but um, if you count the material let me see white has seven pawns four pawns so two pawns for one one minor piece and two pawns for the other minor piece so it's playable so index is check rook f7 now you cannot you can you can okay you can move the king but then what happens displayable okay displayable but then the rook can jump to e4 no we 
it's playable with rook f7 was played by Nona. Uh, and uh, here, Hussein Muhammad Saif played bishop to c4. Now, why not bishop takes f5, you may ask me. So, it's a bad move because of knight c5, you attack the queen. And then, the knight on d2 is also attacked if you see. Okay, so are you understanding? You're attacking the queen and the knight on d2. Double attack, queen g6, and you could take the piece and you can see now what happens if he attacks your rook what are you going to do you will you're more than happy to eliminate more pieces because you are already you have three pieces for one rook and one rook for one rook so it doesn't matter this is a variation where rook f8 white is just better okay so white is of course better for here oh i'm am i mad no white is not better white is losing i'm sorry black is better what i'm saying man Black is better because yes, he's clear so many pieces he has. And see, he's grabbing pawns now and he's gonna attack everything. All of his pieces are coming into action. The knight cannot go there, but it can jump. That's the plan. And this rook is seeing towards not that king. Okay, nevertheless. So black is better. I'm sorry, I was saying white is better, but black is better. So dumb of me. Okay. So taking on f5 would have been okay, but okay, it's not that good for white. Bishop c4, trying to attack the weak rook on f7. So what would you do, guys, over here? Easy, supported. Okay, queen f8 was also a move. Was it? No. If you said queen f8, the move would be queen takes f5. Okay, so... Try to see the tactics. Try to calculate. What is calculation? Calculation. No, try to calculation. What is calculation? Calculation is seeing um, and evaluating the future position. And that's a very good uh, technique which us humans can use. Try to just see what can happen in the future before making it and before making a disaster for your match and tournament. Think uh, in a uh, may, mind and calculate what can happen if I play this. Okay, I'm losing. Okay, I'll not play this. And if you play it without calculating, you will lose. But you can see the future first. So that's beautiful. So why do waste time? Calculate. Okay. So, knight it takes very nice move. Supporting the rook. Queen g6. Trying to attack our rook. What to do? Move out from the pin. And even if he takes our rook, we don't care. Because we are going to have three pieces for the rook. And also the knight on d2 is, is gonna die someday. Queen c2 and let's take the pawn. So let me uh, see the material. We have one rook for one rook. We have one bishop for one knight for one knight and we have three pieces for one rook. So that's devastating for white. And black is just really nice. Uh, rook d1 develop, bring supporting the knight and bring it. But why to why not to mate? See this structure. This bishop is attacking. This bishop, uh, both the bishop are eyeing. The bishop pair is showing its true colors. The queen is coming in to attack. The knights on here are ready to jump any way they want. This knight can jump to the f3 square. I'm saying this tactical square, dude. You'll see because the f3 can give the, uh, let me tell you, the f3 can give forks, tactical possibilities arise. So, not f1, stopping threat. g3, if you play in queen h3 and you're in great trouble, you're losing the game. Are you understanding? Calculate, okay? See it in your brain. Alright. So, queen h4, not f1. Very well. Can you take on h2? No, it's supported. So what to do? Bring all the pieces into action. Do you remember my, uh, remember the song, Chess Improvement Song? Develop a pieces castle first. Bring all friends to the party before you give you attacking thrust. Alright, so all the pieces are coming, the rook is coming. And you know, the rook is going to lift itself and come into action like this. Let's see how it happens. Rook e3, why rook e3? to come on h3 and bang up the queen, move it aside and shoo up the queen from aside. So, okay, till now, 19 minutes, okay, I'll try to finish this video. Okay, wait, 
rook e3, rook e6 as per the plan. And he sub brings the rook again. Okay, it doesn't matter. It's fine. We are first going to threaten mate on g2 as we can see this. And most of your if you try to um, employ this mating patterns and if you have a long bishop, most of the players won't recognize and play a blunder like something and they won't see this bishop is here and they would lose. But Hussein is a 2000 rated player, he at least know how to see uh, opponent's threat and therefore he plays the move f3. But rook g6, try to attack it and also f3 is now it's not support it supported only once so it supports again now what to play okay now the nana plays a move seeing the tactical targets and he plays she plays bishop d6 no no i'm sorry gabriel nash really plays bishop d6 with idea of pinning also okay all right so I hope you're able to see this. H4 attacking the queen. What to play? Move it aside, dude. B4. Okay, what's happening to my PC? Sorry. Wait for a moment. The PC is hanging. Okay, it's it's hanged. The oh my god. Oh my god. Please wait. So after the disaster of my laptop getting discharged and all of my uh, softwares getting shut down and the uh, during the hippopotamus recording of this video I'm back here uh, I'm sorry for that and let's go see this g great game between Hussein versus Nona Gabriel Ashwili so let's move to the boat okay we were here on this position where Nona play the bishop to d6 in order to pin black tactical targets as i told you and uh, hussein saif played h4 attacking the queen we go queen f6 supporting it and he played b4 to stop the move bishop to c5 so he's seeing his opponent's threat i think that's a very important advice which i can give you so what do does nona play this is a 38th move and she plays bishop to f4 and then the rook rook to d3 and now this is the 31st move of, on the board and i request you all to pause the video over here and tell me the winning move for black which made her win this game and made safe uh, Hussein Saif resigned this game right now. 2000, you are playing against 2000 rated opponent. Imagine yourself in a tournament and make the right move. Pause the video. Yeah. So I hope you paused the video and you saw a really good tactical target. You played knight the e5. You're attacking a weak rook and you're also threatening a very nice this very nice tactic. Take on f3. Let's see what happened. The rook moves, for example. This is not here uh, on the 31st move. Uh, Hussein Mohammed Saif resigned the game. But if uh, let's see this continuation of the rook d1, the problem is knight into f3 and still there's a fork. And uh, you're just winning the rook, and you have so many pieces blasting on white, and it's very easily winning. So this is how Nona. Kavranash really the women world champion defeated a 2000 rated player with none other than the hippopotamus system it is very flexible opening you can play it with against anything almost any anything and that's really beautiful right flexibility it's like water and chess let me tell you, you can make ideas uh, very very effectively in the hippopotamus system and now i'm going to show you one beautiful thing before going and boring you all that from the white side you can do the same thing with an extra tempo you can play g3 they can play e5 bishop g2 d5 g you can you can play this structure against basically any 
against anything it's a universal opening see what am i doing and play this okay three and see is just the whole hippopotamus system with white you have the um you have everything you can play with it with anything so even with this you can win a world championship because even uh, in the world championship between Tigran Petrosian and Boris Spassky, Boris Spassky employed this hippopotamus system in two of his games and both the games were drawn. I do have this game, but I'm not going to show you that game because it was a draw, but you can play it. You can check out that game or I will put the link in the description of that game. You can see the games played by Tigran Petrosian and Boris Spassky or Boris Spassky employed it in a employed this hippopotamus system in a world championship match so i think that's that i hear by hearing that you're pretty confident to play hippopotamus system in almost all throughout your career okay so thank you for watching and please use hippopotamus system as your main weapon and don't tell me that how to beat the hippopotamus system in chess you know an opening doesn't mean that you're gonna win with that okay you every you just chess is about weaknesses and plans okay so make plans weaknesses and don't ever search uh, the question how to beat this opening or to beat that opening what you have to do is see the opponent's weakness plan attack made okay see the opponent's weaknesses attack them what this is what we have learned from this game and use what you have learned implement what you have learned with this i promise you Bye bye. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching.